It was almost precisely a week ago that baby Bree Green was removed from her parent Stephen Maria's home by Child Protective Services. The Greens are medical marijuana patients and Maria is a caregiver. Family Court Judge Richard Garcia agreed to revisit the issue. However, he ended up upholding his referee's decision to remove Bree from their home. He did, however, expand the parents' rights to visit their daughter at Maria's mother's house, where she's staying two and a half hours away. We'll now be able to go spend more than three hours a week with her, so that's kind of the silver lining. And so the fact that I hadn't violated bond and that I had been doing all of that, it just bewilders me that they don't care about the truth. They don't, you know, it's just probable cause. I'm just doing my job. And now my seven month old is suffering. Um. What does your mother say? My mom wants to follow the rules. And but how is Bree doing? Does she miss you? She, um, Bree, she says is doing good. Um, she's all smiles every time she sees us, so. <laughs> I heard she said Dada for the first time and you weren't there to hear it. <laughs> yeah, but on her last visit she said it too. So I have both the recording and um, her saying it in person. So, I mean, you can't go back and take, you know, ever fix that. The Medical Marijuana Act was contemplated by the voters, was initiated by the voters. They realized that some caregivers would have children. And it wasn't like the medical marijuana has a per se provision that you cannot be a caregiver and a parent. That's why 4C is so important, as well as 4A and 4B. There has to be an unreasonable danger, something different than just being a caregiver. There has to be some other allegations. And even go so far as to say there has to be something more than medicinal use, which, cover, which covers the growing of marijuana and the use of marijuana both. The Department of Human Services policy that says substance abuse or the addiction of the parent, caretaker, or adult living in the home to alcohol or drugs does not in and of itself constitute evidence of abuse or neglect of the child. Where, where in the statute does it authorize a parent to use marijuana in front of the child? 4C is the only exception to the protections I, as far as custody, and that is if there's an unreasonable danger that's been articulated and substantiated. Okay. In this case, it is not an unreasonable danger. To use marijuana in front of a child. Mm -hmm. The Attorney General opinion that I quoted, 213 Fish OAG, number 7271, that's what that states. That there needs to be some other factor other than just the use or the cultivation of marijuana. There has to be some other circumstances. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. And we can have, we can go to heck, you know, again, I'm just here about probable cause. I'm not, I'm not here to decide the case after a trial. So it, I have probable cause to believe that children are saying that the people are smoking these, this marijuana in front of them. Your client's going to say that doesn't happen. Okay, well, again, I can sort that out, but the, that's what trials are for. This is, on a, I, you know, this is on a potential problem. See, a lot of this would be a completely different case in my estimation. If we really didn't have a you know, pending felony uh, case in Oakland County that outlines the fact that they, I believe, there's probable cause to believe that, you know, there's been illegal amounts of marijuana being delivered and sold. And that's, that has to be, that has to sort itself out. I know for, uh, you know, I, I know that in a prior case I've had, um, when the evaluation was done, uh, the respondent father, one, would, did not have epilepsy, and two, um, the, the doctor wasn't that convinced that the use of marijuana would help. But again, I don't know, I'm not a physician. I'd like to have a board certified neurologist make that determination for the court. That'll also help me in dispositional hearings in the event the court takes jurisdiction in terms of whether or not I treat this case as a medical marijuana case or as just someone who is addicted to a, um, or someone who's abusing uh, uh, a drug, so. You wanted to know that the medical marijuana was actually useful for epilepsy. Yeah. Uh, the Department of Licensing and Regulation has a list of conditions for which it can be used. Are you suggesting that the list is not proper? Or? I don't know. I have another, another physician. 
But wouldn't the, med the list of conditions supplied by the state be sufficient? Or? I don't know. I'm not in the licensing. I'm not in licensing. All I know is that the last time I had a case involving someone who claimed epilepsy was something cured by marijuana or affected by marijuana, the neurologist said the guy didn't have epilepsy and, and marijuana was not indicated for use. So if, if, the, if the department through its regulations have said we recognize epilepsy as a, that, that's interesting, but... So at least you feel, did you get half a loaf? Maria and Steve can spend time, much more time with their daughter now than they were allowed to before. So. Is it automatic that if you have felony charges pending that somehow now you're considered guilty? No, not in the United States. You're presumed innocent and the Greens will be proven innocent. But didn't it seem as though they were presumed guilty for this hearing today? You did, yes. I, I was surprised to hear a judge go on record making that connection that somehow once charges are brought against you, there's a presumption of guilt. Yeah, we will be ordering today's transcript. Um, the other question I have is that the Licensing and Regulation Administration, LARA, has identified epilepsy as a covered condition. And yet the drug, li the, the judge listed it, not only did he want to know that Steve has epilepsy, but that the doctor that he would authorize would have to verify that it's approved for this use or that it is useful for this condition? Why would one doctor get to say so instead of the Licensing and Regulation Department of the State of Michigan? That's a very good question, and that's something that we will be addressing probably in a motion to reconsider. Or I need to talk to the Greens, but we may also be taking this to the Court of Appeals. I'm, I'm not sure at this point. This that's has all just happened. I really need to discuss this with my clients. <laughs> I think this is not a surprise, uh, considering how desperate the state is to invalidate the Medical Marijuana Act and remove the protections that are provided in the Medical Marijuana Act. I think it's a highly coordinated effort, and I believe it's also coordinated out of Oakland County. As you may know, these felony charges uh, were reinstated, and it works perfectly in this courtroom. Oh, you've got felony charges, both of you. And they're also going after Steve's children now in Genesee County, although the ex, his ex-wife is not interested in in doing that. These are it's all state compelled. It's all state led. They're targets. These people are targets. There's absolutely no valid reason for taking this infant from these parents. None.